mean so highness you would a donatus or donelu the owner of Ochebe in Ebu Kingdom and also a human resource personality. I welcome you to Ebu Kingdom, uh, particularly Uchebe community. This is Uchebe community. And I'm the king of this community. Ebu is made up of nine villages, in quote. Practical eight. If you want to really delve into the histology of Ebu as a kingdom, you look back to the Dark Ages in the sense that there is this period where you have immigrations. People are moving from one place to the other in search of comfort, where there will not be war, where you can find food to eat, where you can cultivate and uh, make sure there's security for you. And uh, if you want to look back properly, we'll go, to the, we'll go back to the 14th century, 15th, 13th century. Ebu as a kingdom today is dichotomized in the sense that it's made up of two tribes. The founder of Ebu today is called Ubuini. Ubuini is the son of a very powerful chief in the Bini Kingdom. During the insurrection in the Bini Kingdom, after the death of Oba Ozulwa, by about 1506, yeah, a very powerful chief migrated out of Bini Kingdom by five of his children. They moved through the Asian Aziz. One is Iyamolo, Eruakme, Ubuini, Uriomo, and the Yonoji. These are the five children the man migrated with, the chief migrated from Bini Kingdom. As they were coming down this way, they were dropping one by one. This man called Ubuini to one of the sons of this chief. Now settled first at uh, a town called Uzia. Uzia, near, very close to Urumi. When he stopped there, he sojourned there for a while. But one of his uh, cousins too, his name is um, Ibuene. When he discovered that place is not comfortable for him, he migrated from there again to a town called Ingele. It's just after the bridge, Edo State. After this bridge, then you get that town, Ingele. He stayed there, he gave birth to a son named Ugolo. He now discovered that place is not true, still not safe for him. He now decided to cross the river Uto to this side. He now discovered this place is comfortable for him. He now sojourned here. When he came to this place, he met some Igala people that migrated to this place. You know, everything is a consensus. If there's consensus, added them, you can live together. So I'm sure when he came, met these people, they are related. They now had an agreement. He delivered a son called Aganike. Is there? It is obvious that he married two wives. One from Edo that gave birth to that child Ingele. Ingele. Before he crossed over to this place. He moved on to this place, gave birth to another son again called Aganike. That's the Edo speaking wife he, he had. When he now got to Ebu here, be by association. He now met the Igala speaking people here. He now married one Igala woman. The Igala woman now gave birth to the children they call the Iepeti. This Iepeti, they are made up of five communities. The Aganike is from that Asian woman, the Edo woman. Then the other four was given birth to by the Igala woman. These four is Okemokuru, Ugolo, Omomogele, Uchebe. Because that Aganike, these are the two children of Ubuini. The, the two children from the Edo woman and these other four from, from the Egala speaking people. Then this other side, this would that they met, they call them Okomeje people. These Okomeje people, to be specific, the Pecho group, Pecho community, is to made to understand that they too migrated from a town across the river Niger here, they call Aya. Then other villages too, in the Okomeje group, migrated to from some other communities across the river Niger. So that is the way we are here. And if you look at Ebu, we are at the northern edge of Delta State. If you go to the north there, the northern area, we are bounded by two Igala speaking communities, the Ingele community and the Uloshi community. The Ingele community is founded by Ubuini. As God will have it, when Ubuini now moved to this side, part of the part of his, his part of his children. That Ubolo gave birth to now migrated alongside came later. Came later again to this Ebu to add to the Ubolo that is here. So predominantly Ebu comprises of two communities. That's Egala speaking community and the Edo speaking community. But you know, he's a warrior. He does not normally reside at home. So he moves up and down. The mother of the children takes care of the home. 
That is why we now see that today, most of us are supposed to be speaking either Bin language or Asian language. We are speaking Igal language by virtue of our association with our mother. So that is why we are speaking Igal language. So if you look, if you ask us today, we tell you why Igala people. But historically, we are dichotomized. The Edo speaking and the Igala speaking. So as long as we are Ebu people, we speak Igala language. Do a lot of other part of the kingdom has migrated, like we migrated from other places too. They migrated to like the Odobo, Odobo community migrated from Ebu here to a town across the river Nanja here, Izam. So if you go to Izam today, there's an area they call the Odobo community. They migrated from this Ebu here. Their land is somewhere there close to the health center. That's where they were occupying. The other group again migrated from Ebu here, they migrated to uh, Ufuan area. They call them the Umwebu. If you go there today, you see. Uh, Ebu Primary School, um, if you go there, you see that. So, if we go there, we break their color for them, they don't break color for us. And if we go there, whether we want to farm or do anything, we don't pay anything. If they equally come here to the same thing, we relate as such, they don't pay anything, do nothing attached to it, you just farm, ask where you farm. That shows the level of our relationship. So, Ebu Primary today, we are farmers. More government presence is uh, far very remote. We are trying to feed the nation. I, I want to tell you, there's no perfect language. Okay. The English language you speak today is a combination of French language, Latino, and the English language that they say they speak. We say league. If you go to France, it's league. So there, there's no perfect language because after the the collapse of Babylon. Everybody scattered. You speak different, different languages mixed together. That Igala language, even Igala language and any other language too, you discover that there's infiltration. Igala language, you can hear part of your inside, you can hear part of Hausa language inside. In Igbo language, you can hear part of Igala inside Igbo language, you can hear part of Yoruba language inside, you can hear part of Hausa in Igbo language. If you go to Hausa language too, the same thing. So I won't say there's a perfect Igala language. Even Ida that is the center of all Igala people, we see fault in the language. Because we have language, we have dialect. I don't know if you appreciate what I'm saying. In the Igala language, there are dialects inside. Like the Yoruba people, you have Yoruba. Eh? But inside Yoruba, you have Ijebu, you have Ondo, you have Ikale, you have Ikiti. You have different dialects. But one funny thing is that they all understand themselves. If there's going to be any disparity, it's going to be very slight. So it is not different from the Igala people. The Igala people from Ida there, if you go to Ida today, discover a part of the language has been infiltrated by the Hausa language. Like we say, sponge. This sponge you used to take your bath. We call it Ishe. And that's the real name because it's, it's a plant in the bush. But if you go to that today, they call it Soso. Soso is sponge in Hausa language. Do you appreciate what I'm saying? Soso in Yoruba language is if you as such. We can speak today. The Igalama will understand, but they're going to have small difficulty. We will understand them too. We are going to have small difficulty. Like now, we call this a file. This file, they used to file something. I'm giving you close examples. Example. File to you could sharpen your collar. If you go to that side, they call it Igbemu. We understand it as Igbemu. We call it here too, Unobe. So you can see that it has, we understand ourselves. Even if you go to Seluku here, this is Seluku here, it's a chime. If you move from this Seluku to Ezi, if Ezi person speaks, you know it's not from this Seluku. But if somebody from this Seluku speaks, this Seluku will know this is my language, this, this is my dialect. He said, Look, man, will understand this is my dad because they are both is a chime. I don't know if you appreciate what I'm saying. Yes, sir. So there's no perfect language as it is, but we all understand ourselves being Igala people. Okay. So, so Yoruba people understand themselves being Yoruba people. Even the Hausa language, the same thing. Thank you, sir. English itself. You go to America, they tell you they speak English, but the English is different from the British. True. So, also other tribes and the countries and languages. Hmm. Because of what people say, what you don't understand, just be mute about it and face why you are here. 
the gospel of Jesus Christ is embedded in the Bible. Preach it as it is written. Don't divide from it and begin to castigate other people. Even you that is preaching this and that, if you want to extend your person, you discover even you to self, you are part of what you are criticizing. Okay, so you are welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much, Daddy. No so, Daddy, from all your explanation, yeah. the uh, predominant language here in Ebu is Igala language. Is Igala language. Very correct. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah.